The common American perception of the French during World War II is quite clear. The French crumpled under the German offensive, surrendered early, and offered little help in the coming battles of the European theater. In reality, the story of the French resistance is not one of cowardice, retreat, and surrender, but one of heroism, bravery, and sacrifice. None better embody these traits than hero of the French resistance, Jean Moulin. Through his given task of uniting resistance forces within occupied France into one organization, Jean Moulin's stand against German occupational forces created a legacy that significantly altered the course of World War II history, saving countless Allied lives and bringing a quicker end to the war. To discuss Moulin's impact, we must first recognize his actions. On June 17, 1940, five days before France's official surrender, Milan was arrested by Gestapo for refusing to sign a document which falsely blamed African French army soldiers for raping and murdering French women and children. After suffering torture and being locked in a cell with the grisly remains of a bombing victim, Milan resolved to commit suicide rather than to sign the document, slitting his throat with a piece of glass. Hearing him, a guard brought Milan to the hospital. After his recovery, Milan was freed and returned to his job as a French government official under the Vichy government. The new French government had cooperated with Germany after France's surrender. However, he refused to carry out immoral orders and was soon fired. It was this final offense that pushed Milan to join the French resistance. Through established contact with French resistors, Milan was smuggled to London in September of 1941. There, he met Charles de Gaulle, leader of the Free French Army, the remnants of the Third French Republic who had sided with the Allied forces after their exile by the German military. After offering his services to de Gaulle, Moulin was given the weighty re responsibility of uniting resistance forces within occupied France under de Gaulle so they co coordinate with allied troop movements. Unlike the Free French Army, the various resistance groups within France, known as the Free French Forces of the Interior, or FFI, lacked coordination in favor of sporadic guerrilla attacks in order to har harass German forces. In January of 1942, Jean Moulin parachuted into occupied France to establish an organization made up of the primary French resistance groups, trade union groups, and political parties op opposed to the Vichy regime. This resistance force could cooperate with and be directed by de Gaulle, allowing for resistance on the Allied front and behind enemy lines. After several months of convincing these groups that uniting is their best interest to liberate France, Milan arranged their first meeting on May 27, 1943 in an apartment building. The fruits of this massive undertaking had now become the Conseil National de la Résistance, or National Council of Resistance, with Milan at its head. Despite initiating what would develop into the pinnacle of French resistance, Moulin would not live long past the Council's creation. On June 21st, Moulin was arrested by Gestapo after being betrayed by a captured council member. For days, he experienced agonizing torture at the hands of infamous Gestapo officer Klaus Barbie. Hot needles were shoved under his fingernails. His fingers were forced between the hinges of a door and a wall, and the door was slammed until the knuckles broke. Screw-levered handcuffs were tightened to cruelly dig into his wrists. Despite his immense suffering, Moulin refused to supply any information to his tormentors, sparing the lives of numerous resistance members. The days of torture left Moulin with internal bleeding and lacerations, and he perished in a train car on its way to Germany on July 8, 1943. He had done his part. The council was safe. It would now lead to greater cooperation within interior French forces and coordination with the major allied powers.